everybody happy Thursday I am no longer sick that's my sunny disposition I tell you when you've been sick that long and there's nothing more satisfactory than just getting out of bed and feeling great so what was the turning point the turning point was eating these crazy pills man like I don't know what the hell those now, did were you, now, would, would you normally not go to the doctor and just I generally don't do doctors yeah yeah but you I thought doctors this time yeah. no this time as soon as I couldn't as soon as my face was so swollen I couldn't even breathe that was like okay I'm going to make yeah, an exception here we're going to go see the doctor and uh, does that change your opinion on what you should do in the future um well there's definitely a point yeah. beyond which point one no should return. not trifle with point no, point no return. potentialities so let's just say that i yeah, came okay. as close okay. to that okay. edge as i'd ever want to go without uh testing the theory further and i'm happy to report that the doctor was in and thanks to the doctor being in the influenza is out theoretically yeah maybe well Anyways, we had uh, big things happening in the universe of cannabis. The cannabis universe is unfolding as it usually does in its sort of spastic uh, bipolar way. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, nothing. Nothing really has changed there. Um, have you? What about the vaping issue? Are we going to talk about the vape? We're going to talk we a bit about the vapes today because why? Because our sponsor, Halo Labs, uh, is a uh, is a purveyor of uh, of dab tabs and the shatterizing shatterizer vaping system which they put out a press release that we're going to look into a little bit later today where wherein they are laying claim to the high ground and saying that scientifically they can prove that their products are safer than all of the other vapes that are causing problems and are not subject to the same right issues because they're fundamentally different now am i correct <laughs> in saying that a lot of the the vaping uh equipment the the ones that have got the funny flavor like bubble gum flavor like there's all these different flavors right those are not cannabis i know <clears throat> and yet those would seem to be the ones that are causing the problems well i i mean this is the thing in the news it doesn't say oh and jenny uh jenny is in the hospital because she was sm she happened to be smoking yeah. xyz corpse double bubble number three they don't give you that information yeah, in the news stories they vaping. just say it's vaping another hospitalized victim of vaping exactly yes, yes and yes. so you're free to associate that with oh is that cannabis is that tobacco no matter what if you're a hater your haters haters going to hate man haters are going to hate haters going to hate what's the opposite of hate love <coughs> no indifference what? yeah what's the diff what's the opposite of, of birth what's the opposite of birth yeah what's the opposite of death uh birth i don't think it's so. not life 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 is a uh, life but the permeates opposite of the death, universe the, i mean there's what, no what, opposite to life well there's no opposite to death one yeah it's argue. birth I don't think so. Birth, death. What? So the minute you die, you actually are born? No. Well, so then where's the similarity? There's no similarity. Where's the opposite? It's the opposite. Yeah, but so at the moment you die, what happens? I don't know. I've never died. Well, the moment you're born, what happens? Mm. Do you remember before you were born? Absolutely. I, I died. <laughs> well, no, that's kind of my you're, point. You're coming back for a repeat performance. That's what you're telling me. I, I get that's it. That's right. Okay. This oh, is like my... Okay. I oh. was once a mighty warrior in the Roman Empire, and I declare... Yeah. What are you going to do with all that nice old wine that you don't drink anymore? You've got some well, wine. Wait until I start drinking again. Oh, oh. there's light in the air. Well, the, what? You think I'm going to quit drinking forever? <laughs> I know that's what usually happens. You think it's a great idea, then you get past the first month, and you're sort of moving on month two. You're thinking, who, mm. who gives a shit? What happens? Like, I'd rather drink. Well, that's I'm maybe, waiting for that know. moment. At this point, I was so just coming off of a week of like relative I sickness. Yeah, yeah. I am no, your uh, voice still is, of the. This is the best it's sounded since that uh, that trip. Oh, that's pills. Yeah. That's pills for you. 
Anyways, pills, thrills, and chills. So yeah, we're going to talk about uh, vaping and uh, we're going to talk about Halo's press release today because that's kind of interesting. Uh, we have uh, guests on the show today include um, Mr. George, B <laughs> I should know this because I only practice it 30 times, George Barbets. Barbet Siotis, George Barbet Siotis. He's the CEO of PropGo Technologies, a company that's going to be IPOing towards Q4 this year. Uh, and, uh, and then we also had Steve Dunn here from Crown Mining, and Edward had the pleasure of that conversation. And uh, yeah, so, but right now we're going to talk to the lovely and talented Laura McCallum, who's here with the news. Here's what's making cannabis headlines this Thursday, September 26, 2019. Halo Labs provided a statement regarding DabTabs technology, certifications, and third-party testing reinforcing that DabTabs are fundamentally different to current vaporization technologies. Uniquely, the material used in DabTabs is also NSF and ASTM 61 certified for air and drinking water filtration and diffusion certifying that the ceramic dab tabs do not leach any material and there are no chemical additives. Spectrum Therapeutics, the medical division of Canopy Growth Corporation, announced a donation to the Montreal Sacre Coeur Hospital Foundation to support the Canadian Sleep and Circadian Network's national campaign about the importance of good quality sleep on health. Spectrum's donation to the campaign has been made based on CSCN's request to support their initiative to organize the sleep scientific community around the question of cannabis use for sleep disorders. Namaste Technologies has signed sales and marketing agreements with CanTX Life Sciences to launch and sell their flagship medical brand, Bauer, under Canmart's consignment sales model. This allows Canmart to provide direct-to-consumer medical sales through Canmart.com and leverage its license to approved facility to partner with licensed producers in a more meaningful way. Fabian MJ announced a cannabis THC production and extraction partnership with Texoma Herb Company in Oklahoma. Texoma has a licensed retail dispensary, greenhouse, and outdoor growing operations in Kingston, Oklahoma. The new extraction and production facility is anticipated to be fully operational and selling vaping branded product wholesale to licensed Oklahoma dispensaries throughout the state by the end of 2019. Alternative Health has launched a new wholesale CBD business line and signed a supply agreement with Rising Sun Capital. The agreement will target the delivery of a combined 1,000 kilograms of hemp-derived CBD isolate and distillate per month. Alternate Health will arrange sales and distribution, having already secured interest from several potential buyers. Pasha Brands has signed a supply agreement with Canandia Bioceuticals. The supply contract will add approximately 500 kilograms of craft cannabis to BC Craft's supply chain and brings the number of licensed microproducers BC Craft has signed supply agreements with to four. Canandia's microcultivator license allows for a canopy size of 2,150 square feet, which will typically generate approximately 500 kilograms of craft cannabis per year, operating out of an indoor facility. And that's your news for today. To keep up to date with all things cannabis, visit the Cannabis Daily on MidasLetter.com. Really young. A book every night. If everybody read a book every night, you know, uh, the world would be a lot. Smarter. A lot more bookish. Bookish. No, there's a lot of crap out there that, um, you know, actually nobody really Hey, you know what? Anymore. You know, uh, Weed MD is harvesting here soon. You know, Weed MD is harvesting, but more importantly, Ed, you, you. I'm harvested. You are being harvested today because it's your birthday. What? No. Happy oh, birthday to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ed. Happy birthday to you. Speech. 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 Holy smokes. All right. I don't know what to say. Make a wish. Don't blow it on me. <laughs> I won't let the sun go down. Perfect. Woo! Awesome. All right. All right. All right. All right. World peace. Everybody yeah. back on their heads. Yeah, let's yeah. not let's, let's let's everybody not, not okay. be back. able to forget okay. what day it yeah. is. That's not Edward's uh, birthday. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Look look at that, eh? I'm hungry. Oh man, just don't you want a glass mm. of milk with that? No. No, no, no I don't drink milk. Rice you milk? know what? Think about what species drinks the, the milk from a, another species. 
doesn't happen very often, except we do. Well, but we're omnivorous. We're, yeah, but we're not, you know, our, our parents aren't cows, you know. But we're omnivorous. That means we that consume everything. Are, really? Yeah, that's a sign of higher intelligence. Really? We eat everything. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Well, what other, and what other species eats the brains of another animal? Monkey brains. Those, <laughs> that's what we eat. You, 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 you know they, 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 do, they take... Have you ever eaten monkey brains? No, but you know they do that. Eh? Over Are the you sure? Eat. Yeah, they, they t not lop off the skull. Yeah, put, no, put the monkey. You've, you've done this, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't done it. Come on, you have so. <laughs> I'm not going to bop some poor monkey on the head and eat his brains. It'd be too much like eating. I know. You know, my. It'd be too Your close dog to or something. I know. You know what? You got to be careful here. Yeah. You got to be politically correct. And on that note, what do you think? You think we're the world's like? What about this list? This little uh, little, little young woman from that little tart. Greta Thunberg? Boy, she's certainly... She's really kind of... <laughs> yeah, she, I, can't, I, I can't believe she sleeps well. I think she's undermining her own... Uh, Agenda? Credibility with this accusatory uh, me versus you sort of stance. I don't think that that serves anybody's interest, including right. her own. Right, right. Like, you're never going to get any consensus on moving in a new direction by just throwing out accusations. What's the solution, Greta? Not everybody can afford to travel on a carbon fiber built boat and spend a week crossing the ocean to talk to the United Did Nations she do and that? say, how dare you? How dare you? Does she, she, yeah. So she has, she's got a little lettuce in her pocket. She's got some sponsorship behind her, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. But anyways, that, I know. it's not that I don't appreciate her for actually uh, you know, the problem is with, with young speakers, advocates like that, you got to wonder to what degree is it the fame that it has attracted that now drives the agenda? Okay, so, so we're older. Well, you are. I'm, I'm really old. You're, you're, you're getting there. Nope. She's very young. Now, there, how many times have you said, what was I thinking about when I was 20 and I did this? Like... You, like you, you know, you're talking to yourself and thinking. Remember oh that? yeah, when I got this uh, giant thing on my ass, the tattoo. Right? You oh. got a giant jet tattoo on your ass? <laughs> no, I got no tattoos. Oh, but but you know what I mean, right? Like you say, oh, what was I thinking? Like, oh my god, you know, yeah. I, I entered a beer no, drinking I, contest. I usually think that as I'm leaving prison in the morning. <laughs> I know that's my point. So obviously, she may look back and say, well, what was I thinking? Well, I don't think so. I think there's, there's two risks for her. One risk is that she becomes a caricature of herself and just becomes like a, like just a mem, a meme, a mem. She's just like, a, yeah, she's just like a sort of a cliche because she hasn't been able to affect any change. She's only been able to amplify a message, which has not, ex has not <coughs> been inex in, in existent prior to her. There's been lots of climate change advocates and sure. activists. But the problem is, like her, is they don't exactly come with a full agenda of here's how you can actively and realistically make changes to the world <coughs> that can be adopted by one and all. So like when you think about climate change, do you think the guys in uh, the, the Yemen tribe, the Houthis, do you think they're thinking about climate change when they're just fighting for their daily survival? They don't have the convenience of thinking about climate change. They are fighting for survival. Nature, if we, we are a threat to nature, nature will take care of us. Eventually. We're part of the whole thing, right? Like it's not. Arguably. Holistically. So that's going to happen. So, you know, humanity gets eliminated, then, they, then the world will move on. You think? Yeah. Huh. I, I, like, I mean, I humanity agree. will get eliminated. Well, what do you suggest? Nature will, like, survival of the fittest, right? In other words, if we're doing the wrong thing and nature suffers, nature shuts it down. The, the acids, uh, the oceans are too acidic. Another mass extinction. And it starts all over again until we find the right combination of well, behavior. Well, I don't know. I think this is the first step in the, you know, the, you look out at the universe, and there's yeah. no shortage of lifeless rock orbs floating around in space. Right. And I think that the first step to becoming that in an entity like Earth that is covered with life is that a species comes along and eradicates all life on Earth. And that's the first step into becoming a lifeless orb floating along in space. So I suspect that 
Whereas we're looking for life on other planets, I suspect <coughs> it might have been here all along, just so far back in the timeline that we lack the technology to detect those last yeah. passages. But I think this is a this is a cycle that's oft repeated in nature. Yeah. Species comes to dominance, yeah. defiles its environment like through dominance. Dinosaurs, domination. look at dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, right? lemmings. Flemings? <laughs> lemmings. Lemmings or Flemings? Flemings? It's like flamingos or something like that. Fl flummoxed. Flummoxed. Anyways, um, okay. okay. Let's look at the uh, large cap cannabis stocks here. Yeah, today. let's see what's going on there. I, I noticed there's some action here. Yeah, uh, True Leaf, which is actually one of our top picks, is the uh, is up three point eight five percent. HRV's oh. moving across nicely. Oh, wait a moment for it. Um, see, this is the cool thing about our shop is we're kind of like in many respects, even the talent is involved in production, and the production is often the talent. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, what did I tell you? The wow. markets are generally up and down and down and up. Look at that, eh? So we got the large cap index is down a paltry 0.13%. We'll call that a wash. We'll call that flat on the day. The minus letter small cap index is up 1.63%. That is not unsubstantial. The venture index is down 1.16%. That's not exactly unsubstantial. And the CSE index is up 2.25%. Now, do you want to know why the CSE index is up so much? Why? Because the Safe Banking Act got passed yesterday in the United States. That's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing if you're a completely wow. law Wow, you, you held it. You held a key of C there. It's a good thing Was if you're a completely law. I don't know. If you're a law abiding cannabis producer yes. who only sells what you grow under license in the confines of what your license permits. Now, if you're a more ambitious type who's more willing to paint outside the lines and. Paint outside the lines? Yeah. You're up willing to supplement the income of your enterprise by sourcing supply from places that might not be so licensed? You mean like a little bit of black market activity? A little black market uh, input? Like uh, maybe yeah. you're uh, using a black magic marker. With I have that been black to numerous uh, sites where there is clear evidence of uh, black market supply going into the legitimate product. Really? Mix. Whoa! Indeed. Don't tell the Health Canada. No, people. no. Actually, I <laughs> have uh, I have not been to any site in Canada and seen that. I've only seen that in the U.S. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen in Canada, and obviously it doesn't happen everywhere in the U.S. I only can tell you it is very much a real deal. In Canada, we got our own problem. Like the uh, unlicensed dispensary. Is, that, is there a shortage of cannabis developing because a lot of the crops aren't being? I grow it. There's no shortage around me. Oh yeah. My neighbor grows it. Everybody grows it. Like there's, I've got, I've got four canisters of four different kinds of cannabis in my house. Oh, I, know. I see you looking at my. And I'm not even like. Cupcake. Oh, is get that away, your get, cupcake? Get away cupcake. from me. Rice milk. Rice milk. <laughs> Give me rice milk. <laughs> I get say I used to drink milk. But then I was like, probably at some point in my life, much like you, I was like, Jesus, how weird is it that I'm drinking the milk of some I can't species? imagine it's good. It can't be good for you. It can't. Well, what, what do you mean? We eat I, I can understand if you were drinking human milk. That probably makes more sense. My brother once had a cockamamie idea to make cheese out of uh, his wife's breast milk. <laughs> what would he call it? Uh, he had a crazy name for it. Damn, what was that? I can't remember. Reggie, if you're watching, what were you going to call your wife's oh, bills? Geez. i got to tell this joke later. It's, it's hilarious, but really? I can't tell it on the air. Why not? Because I'll probably get... Turf to get us booted off of YouTube? Yeah. No, we don't want that. No, no. I'm just kidding. I don't know Anyways, any uh, yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, this is why if we look at the CSE index, I'm going to pull up the uh, index page here. You know, you know and, and, and uh, also, C-Web's up nicely today. Well, duh because the Safe Banking Act passed. So these guys don't have to skulk around uh, transporting bags of cash between points of sale, and they now have relationship possibilities with real banks, which means they can wire funds, they can write checks, they can have credit cards. Okay, so, so a reasonable day for the cannabis sector in terms of good, great news, mm -hmm. and the big index is still down 0.3%. Can't even muster a little... That's because the big index is composed Composed? Compo composed. Okay. Primarily. Is that a drink? Compro on a weighted Composy? basis 
of Canadian stocks, oh. for which Ooh. the Safe Banking Act had zero impact. Can I can I make a suggestion sure. for future shows? Absolutely. Make, let's make a, a cannabis list. Okay. That's U.S. related, and then we can we can compare. Can what? Well, you say <laughs> these are Canadian companies. So, well, mostly Canadian. Well, let's get to let's make a. a, a, a we have a, the Americans scattered throughout our Canadian lists. Yeah, but I want to. I want to. Want to have a strictly American list. An exclusive club. Just American companies. Okay, we're going to start the U.S. Midas Letter Cannabis Call Index. Called the Eddie Group. On uh, we're going to start that on Tuesday next week. Okay. How about that? Is that okay with you? Is Monday holiday? No, Monday's not a holiday. So why it's going to take them a few days okay. to get this uh, index together. <laughs> they're probably uh, yeah. cursing cursing me right now. Uh, no, I think they're not. I think they're not. You know, I think what we'll do is we'll retire the TSX Venture Index. And because those are, there's so much crossover between the TSX Venture and the Small Cap Index that I think we'll go CSC Index, TSX Index, Small Cap Index, and U.S. only. They, uh, just to see if there's, you know, like, because we're talking about... No, but here's the thing, though. This is the thing. Are we going to do U.S. companies... Right. I don't know. ...that have only U.S. symbols? Because there's a handful of those. Mostly they're on the OTC, which nobody trusts. Well, the ones that, the ones that are benefiting from that, that legislation today... What legislation? The Bank Act. That was yesterday. Oh, I guess they'd be benefiting today, too. <laughs> well... So what's it like to be 68? I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? 68, 68, I'm closer to 100. Did you forget what I just said there? What's it like to be 68? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? Now you're repeating yourself. So I guess, never mind, I can see what it's like. <laughs> I gotta tell you something, okay? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't feel any older. Really? Yeah, I kinda do. <laughs> I feel like, you know, like I don't give a shit anymore. I really no. don't. Ah. <laughs> really? Look at. Yeah, I can tell by the look on your face. Yeah, sheepish. She no, well, I would say that's not really sheepish. How about right? wolfish? Wolfish? Wolfen. What about goldfish? <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, let's talk about. So let's look at the. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's look at it. We're going to look at the uh, the uh, the, uh, the CSE index. Okay, so we got to go through a whole bunch of. I look think crop I think infrastructure. I told you that was a pump and dump. It's down at six cents. Which one's that? Crop infrastructure had all these pumper and dumpers in the chats trying to get me to bring them on the show. I invited them on the show. They would never come. As soon as a guy doesn't want to come on our show, I know it's because they know we're going to reveal them to be a pumper dumper. And look at that pumper doodles. Six you know, cents. you know, I got to say the, the the candle on the big chart yesterday. Yeah. That 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 looks like that's a tradable bottom. I'm Go just on. saying. I'm thinking you can. What are you talking about there? Right here, this candle. What chart are you talking about? The big chart. The big chart. You've heard of the you've heard of the big uh, the big joint. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you crack yourself up there, don't you, Edward? <laughs> oh. Boy, oh boy. Anyways, well, you're looking for that. Yeah. Uh, Heritage Cannabis, look at that, is up 13.11%, even though they have very little exposure in the U.S. Dixie Brands up eight cents, 19.5%. They are purely wow. a U.S. play. Uh, Green Star Biosciences, don't know them. They're only 12 cents. We don't really care. Uh, Epic Leviathan Cannabis Corp. They're Canadian. Believe is Canadian. Chemistry is Canadian-ish. 20 cents. Ooh. Uh, 360 Solutions, 12 cents. Ooh. Boy, a lot of these. Yeah. A lot of suffering going on here. Of, you, you know what? You got Harvest Health and Recreation, though. Up 39 cents. 8.19%. This is a direct beneficiary of the Safe Banking Act. This is the upside in our market happening here. Yes. Uh, Harvest Rec and Health has a, an outsized impact on the CSE index because of its uh, market cap, which is, I believe, let's take a quick look. Uh, yeah, $1.5 billion market cap. So there you go. That's the big news. Moving markets in the United States today, Edward. Um, let's have a chat. We had a chat. We had a chat. We know the chat is at uh, the chat. We're going to have right next. We're going to have a chat at George Barbitsiotis, CEO of Prop Go Technologies. I'm here now with George Barbitsiotis. He's the CEO of PropGo Technologies. George, welcome. 
Great to be here. Uh, George, tell me quickly, what is PropGo? What does it do? We're a leading uh, online real estate media and solutions company focusing on the business to business space. Our value proposition provides efficiencies for real estate agencies and developers to better manage their business. Hmm. Uh, we also power online real estate for major media companies, including our own PropGo brands. Uh, those include the Financial Times uh, real estate section, uh, Nikkei's real estate section, which is the largest uh, news provider for financial services and, and, and media reports in Japan, uh, Zhao Bao, which is a Chinese media arm of Singapore Press Holdings, and the Chinese New York Times. Hmm. So you're, uh, is, is it an ad tech platform? Well, what's great, what's unique about our platform, it's actually a CRM and SaaS platform with listing database and management tools. And from those listing management and database tools, our clients can push their properties to media portals within our network, the PropCo.com network. Those include, again, the Financial Times, Nikkei, mm -hmm. Zhao Bao, and the Chinese New York Times, hmm. and outside our network. So if I was a small independent media company in Canada publishing financial media, I would become a customer of PropGo if I wanted to project my media into those audiences? It'd be the other way around. We would oh. provide you with a, a real estate channel hmm. to show your audience uh, real estate listings from not just Canada, but around the world. So it's hmm. a very unique value proposition, and you'd be part of our network, and it'd be very easy for the media company to do, just using our software and connecting our software and clients to your traffic and audience. Interesting. Okay, so tell me about your revenue model. How does that work? Uh, on the client side, we have a SaaS-based B2B platform. So agencies and developers will run their business on our platform. This will connect their multiple offices in and around the world. So in the Asia-Pacific region, Savills runs their business currently for Thailand, Vietnam, mm -hmm. Singapore, uh, and India. And they're expanded to multiple markets, and they do this on one platform. This solves a major problem real estate agencies and developers who want to work across multiple markets they have, because you don't want to have multiple markets on multiple different platforms, each solving the same problem multiple times, all not talking to each other. So our platform provides this capability to the developers and real estate agencies who pay us a flat monthly recurring revenue fee. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we have uh, a media model where our classified online marketplace power our own channels and these media channels like the Financial Times, Nikkei, and the New York Times, and we do a revenue share. So our clients push their inventory to these channels and we collect marketing and media revenue and split that with our partners. Hmm. Okay, very cool. Are you profitable now? Yes, we're EBITDA po uh, positive hmm. um, and have been so for a while. Uh, and we're looking to scale up and go take our business global. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's the uh, what's revenue projections look like for the next 12, 24 months? We've done about a 300% CAGR, um, and this year we're looking at approximately $4 million uh, US dollars mm -hmm. uh, in 2019. Next year we're looking to double that to about $8 million, and then $60 million in, in, the, in the subsequent year in 2021. Wow, okay, and so out of all of those things, what is the primary revenue driver? What percentage of the revenue is driven by that main thing? Um, great. So it's 50-50. So pro we have 50% SaaS and uh, software solutions driving uh, half our revenue, and we're scaling up the media revenue as well. So it's highly synergistic. So clients uh, will, will purchase from both the software platform and the media platform, uh, and that both basically uh, creates a highly synergistic revenue model. Currently, we have B2B relationships with uh, Sotheby's and Christie's, uh, Savills and Collier's, and we're seeking as part of this financial race to expand our platform from within our own existing client network uh, to add their affiliates and offices. Mm -hmm. Case in point, Sotheby's would have uh, approximately 1,500 offices located around the world with 15,000 agents. Our ARPU is 1,000 per agent uh, per annum. So that total addressable market within the one enterprise client is approximately $15 million. Hmm. Wow, impressive. And what's the competitive landscape look like? Great. Uh, in any um, market that we, we serve, there's a, a SaaS platform, a media platform, and a syndication platform that works really well, let's say, for Canada or for the United States or for the UK and Australia. But there's no platform that addresses all those markets providing all three of those tools. So we can provide a SaaS platform that can address the Canadian market and tap into the Canadian local portals and then provide the international coverage and exposure. Case in point, a Canadian developer can now market their listings all throughout Canada on our platform and to other channels not on our network. 
network in Canada, and then they could push those properties and open up offices in Hong Kong and China, where we're located, mm. and reach those audiences uh, there. Because obviously, you know, there's a, a large amount of buyers from the Asian market uh, buying international properties, and our pr platform is a leading platform in the world in facilitating those transactions. Hmm. Wow, sounds like quite quite a quite a machine. I can't wait to check it out. Um, okay, so it sounds like you've got growth opportunities in the in the sort of uh, family of media companies you can associate with. You've got growth opportunities, obviously, in every market where there's real estate developers active. Where does this thing become attractive as a takeout, and to whom? Uh, precisely, Amy. In, in, in the future, we believe a lot of the siloed media companies or property portals may want to um, acquire international capabilities. We also believe our end user clients and developers may want to acquire those capabilities and, and take those in-house. As you know, there's a phenomenon called Compass mm -hmm. in the United States, which is a, a, a digital agency. And they're taking a lot of market share because they provide those digital tools for the U.S. market. And the other real estate agencies and developers want those same capabilities, and, and they, can, they also want the capability to expand internationally. So we become a very attractive target for media companies, uh, real estate property portals, and also real estate companies. Wow, fantastic. Sounds like a great story, George. Um, you guys are raising money now for a uh, go public transaction at some point in the future? Yes, actually, we're here in Canada. We're, we intend to list on the Toronto uh, Venture Stock Exchange mm -hmm. uh, by the end of November, early December timeframe, and we're raising capital as part of that transaction. Okay, great. Uh, George, we'll leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in due course. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry, I am losing my mind today. Um, it is a side effect of the antibiotics that I think are not quite as antipsychotic as they're supposed to be. But anyways, no. Um, right. Hilarious. Uh, let's start with the conversation now about this press release right here. Halo, Halo Labs highlighted their dab tabs, technology, third party certifications and testing given current vape climate. So Halo's objective here is to draw attention to the fact that through third-party testing labs, they have proven that uh, the material used in DAB tabs, which is also NSF ATSM 61 certified for air, drinking water filtration and diffusion, certifies that DAB tabs do not leach any material and there are no chemical additives. So, um, there is a, uh, well, Kieran, Sidhu, the CEO, has uh, stated that uh, with recent news headlines surrounding deaths and health issues associated with vaping, Halo is proud to fill and distribute dab tabs with full spectrum, unadulterated, natural extracts. There you have There's it. going to be a lot of uh, if they can controversy be, on this. Well, whole Halo Labs was to be the only wow. vape product producer that passed the test of against all the other ones. That would potentially be quite huge for them. Yeah, no kidding. Wouldn't that, like, I mean, that stock would be on fire. Well, that stock is on fire, Ed. I don't know if you've noticed. It's trading like a million shares a day, two million shares a day, not least of which because we are pushing mightily. But, uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of volume. Um, but, uh, lots yeah. of volume. Lots of volume. So we were talking about Erasmus earlier. The, the the philosopher yeah yeah what was what was his deal I don't know he's uh, Erasmus De Desiderius Erasmus Rotterdamus known as Erasmus or Erasmus of Water Rotterdam was a Dutch philosopher and Christian humanist who is widely considered to have been the greatest scholar of the Northern Renaissance really really. This according to I wonder, Wikipedia. You know what he knew that no one else knew. Well, I'm curious about what is what what is the definition what? of a Christian humanist? Like I mean, is that like okay, a Christian is a murderous hypocritic, you know, say whatever I need to say to get whatever I need to get kind of 
construct. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Humanist is somebody who has is the opposite of that. Right. Compassionate. Basically, so you think that's of like an ox oxymoron almost. Well, it's a contradiction in terms. Yeah. Christian humanist. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel. I don't. You know. You know. You know what? There are a lot of there are a lot of humanists that are Christian. All of the There's real no humanists that I've ever met don't feel the need to embellish that label with anything further. In fact, they don't even add the ist on the end. Human. Not just human. 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 Human me. Humor me. Humor, humor me. How is it that the word the good, human and the humor? The good human man. Ding, ding, ding. The good human man's coming back. I'm an ice cream man. Stop me as I'm passing by. Do, 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 do. Um, so the good humor man. I mean, the ice cream man. I mean, Erasmus. Boy, oh boy. How we get tangled up in these twisted webs we weave. How in the hell can you mis confuse Erasmus for the good humor man? Or a Christian humanist, because that's how we're sort of circularly referencing philosophically these yes. twisted concepts here. Yes. But, uh, yeah. Um, what else we got to say today? Um, you? How about the S and P? Well, I, I'm going to look at it because yeah. it's it's sure. always sure. You, you know we we got to we got to always uh, just let me get it up here. Oh, you got a phone call over there? No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. No phone call. No phone call. Okay, so here we go. Here comes the SPX. Da, 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 da. How come it does not... Uh, where is it? <laughs> you have a hard time. Oh, yeah, there. there it is. There it is. Okay. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. I want to show... I want to put... What, what's going on here? What? What? <laughs> It sounds like you're having a malfunction. I think I've got a problem. Okay, Houston, I've got a problem. Houston, I've got a problem. I'm going to ship my pants uh, as we speak. We should play that commercial. <laughs> I don't think that we would gender some of the uproar that uh, accrued to that. Actually, if we can get that okay, interstitial up by Ship My Pants, the Kmart commercial from 2013. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty funny. It's pretty okay, funny. so here we are. Here we are, back and forth. We're gonna we're gonna show again S and P. We're sort of in this this state of indecision. There's the peak, all time peak. There's the test, which failed. It tried again, failed. And yesterday was a nice green day recovery, but it's 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 been trending a little lower. It's like watching paint dry. We're in this this period of indecision. There's the consolidation in August, and here in, you know, we're, we're not, we're, you know, like, it looks to me like a bit of a, a head and shoulders here. Head and shoulders? Yeah, you see that's that? like shampoo. That's like a, sh that's like a shoulder, shoulder, or, here, how about that? Hmm. <laughs> that's uh, quite yeah. the uh, sketch. Abstract art. Etch a sketch. Is so so the, the S&P down a tad, or up a tad, not much. Yeah, not much though. Gold week again. I'm getting Gold. It, taking it on the on the chinny chin chin. <laughs> it's Gold so funny. week again. Look at this. Look at this. I just want to draw attention to this uh, steep precipitous drop from 1527 down to 1502 in the space of call it 48 mm, hours. No, call it tw <laughs> what? Call it call, call it 40 minutes. What? Look here, at it. You're not looking look at here. The, look at. <laughs> so that, that was just. That was two days ago. Yeah. No, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm talking okay. about. Okay. <laughs> so, drop from fifteen hundred twenty-eight dollars. <laughs> just because it's my birthday, dollars. you don't have to pretend I'm funny. Okay, you're laughing at all my jokes. <laughs> Over today. the course First of time ever. like two and a half hours. So what? let me ask you: Under in what market does that kind of a steep precipitous drop off occur, absent a fundamental okay, change? Okay. Can I? Can I? Proffer, and, and, uh, uh, That's why I'm asking you okay, this question. Okay, so so guess who I bumped into today? Uh, uh, one of the one of the foremost experts, or at least one of the most renowned gold investors in Canada. Yes, in I, the world. I bumped into him at the coffee shop, and I'm not going to say which one because you know they'll everybody they'll come will line up about the, the door. They want to get my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, anyway, Eric Sprott. I'm going to mention his name. <laughs> Can we say that? We well, probably we, we, shouldn't. Well, okay, okay. I, I didn't. See, we were we were do, we were well until we actually blurted out his name. 
No, but I'm just saying. He's a he, he gave a speak to, speech this morning, and he said <laughs> this was this big big option expiries. Yes. This week. Did you see the speech? No. Well, then see no. it or hear it. Well, see it. Big difference. Yeah, you don't want to go see a speech. Well, if you go you, hear if it. You go to a speech. You're seeing the speech. No, I know. If you listen if to the speech on the you, radio, if he hands you a if you, printed but copy, if you're listening to, yeah, well, or if you're listening to it on the radio. No, but if you go to a speech and it's live, you're seeing the speech. No, you're hearing it. Well, you're hearing it, well, and you're seeing. How about how about when you there, go to a play? Do you say I'm, I've gone to hear a play? Okay, what if I close my eyes while I'm there? Am I hearing it or seeing it? <laughs> well, you can. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, but when you go to a play, do you say, "Oh, I went and heard a play last night"? Yep. No, you don't. You say, "I went." No, and but saw there's a play. Act, there's there's a there's a percent. visual component. Yeah. Just like when you go see a guy give a speech, there's a visual component. You're going the to, guy you're is there. You're going to hear what he has to say. Oh my gosh! Come on. Okay. Holy we digress. Cow. Anyway, the, the 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 thing is this. Look. There's option expiry. There's a lot of premiums that were built into the, that, that 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 gold market. Now they're all going to expire worthless, yeah. just like that. Yeah. Those games, you know, he rigged. He, he, it's rigged. Okay, here we go. Let's watch. Oh, can we get the sound up? Do we have the sound up? Is the sound playing to the live? Just shit my pants. Oh, come on, guys. No, can't get the sound. Okay, no sound. Um, anyways, talk about uh, shipping your pants. Uh, the price of copper has been uh, uniformly beat up. I'm going to pull up a copper chart now. Now, note to control room, if we go to a chart, we should probably go to full screen instead of like with all the extras around the edge. Uh, yeah, so go to the, blow it out. There we go. Because you can't see the fine nuances of pointing and everything. So what chart is that? Is that copper? That's copper. Wow. Yeah. This is copper yeah, contract but that's, You know what? I, I'd like to see something longer than that. But my point is... What's your point? That just like as the gold chart exhibited a precipitous drop in price over the course of two hours in the evening of... This, this one happened last night. But it's like somebody's doing round robin of the commodities and just beating the crap out of them to keep the prices low. Now, who benefits from low commodity prices? The Chinese. And? And anybody else who has to buy them. And who benefits from high commodities prices? The person selling them. The producers. The producers. Ah. So if you wanted to corner the copper market and you had unlimited financial resources, how would you go about doing that? Well, if you had unlimited financial resources, maybe you wouldn't need to corner the market. Well, yeah, you would if you wanted to continue having unlimited okay. financial resources. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. Have we got sound? Don't know what's going on. Look, right. look at Charlotte Swab's up 60 cents today. Yeah, you know why? The Bank Act. <laughs> the Safe Banking Act strikes again. Uh, is that is that is that banking act uniform in the United States or is it just a certain? It's a federal act. A federal. It's a federal crime. It's a federal offense. A federal federal. Are the feds going to get involved? The feds. Jesus, don't bring in the feds. The feds. I think are we here. can handle it ourselves here. You know, we had a conversation. You had a conversation. I did. There's a Steve Dunn from Crown Mining speaking about copper, and here Dr. was that delightful little Dr. Dr. Copper. copper. Joining me now, my good friend, Stephen Dunn, CEO of Crown Mining, big shareholder. I'm a big shareholder. You're a big shareholder. You own over 20%. That's right. And it's, it, the, the asset's already there, and it's obviously going to be a lot bigger. If we can spend some money. Yeah, if, yeah it, no, it's, it's, been the, it's been the worst uh, time for juniors. That I can ever remember. I can't remember it worse than this. I really can't. I've been doing it since 1974. Yeah. And worst market ever. And can't, the, you can't raise money. And, and with the electrification of the world, copper, it's just, it's not about if, it's about when. That's right. And, and, and that's the hard part, right? Yeah. Yep. And you've, oh. been, you've been doing investments in, we've, you know, 30, 40 years. I, yeah. You know, demand for copper just it goes up every single year, and it's yeah. because of this electric, electric, electricity drive. <laughs> Electrification—it's a tough one. Yeah, and so so you got a deposit. Yep. And there's silver there. 
Yep. And what there's you, gold there? We have um, a billion pounds in the indicated category of copper, a billion pounds in inferred, and another billion pounds that's historical outside of those two. We also have 25 million ounces of silver and 750,000 ounces of gold. And, and, and if you add it all up, you're talking about a multi-billion dollar in, in situ yep, that's deposit. Right. Now, that's how many right. shares do you have now in Crown? 45? 44 million. 44 yep. million? Um, Market cap of 2 million. It, it, it's, it's stunning. It, yeah. it's, it's hard to comprehend. We're not the only one. It's the whole industry. I know. There's just, no, I know. There's no bid for these assets, and, yeah. yet, and yet they're real assets, and the market needs them. Eventually, yeah. econ the economies yeah. need to come and develop these copper deposits because there's not enough copper being yeah. produced. And when you go to, I mean, we're going to go to the property this year, yep. and we're going to look at this, but there's green everywhere, isn't there, from yep. the oxidation of the copper. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, high, it's almost hard to believe, right? It's almost like, you know, we're, we're, we're playing a fast one here on the, on the investing public, but we're not. Yep. You know? Yep. I mean, no, it's, it, it's, it's crazy cheap. I, I saw a stock trade at three and a half yesterday. No, like it's there's shells that it's have more value. No, I know. That's right. That's and, right. And, you know, our, our long-term shareholders, you know, they deserve some uh, accolades for being patient. No, without them, I think, <laughs> where well, would we be, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, so and, and, and I understand, because this was drilled 50 years ago. Well, there's two old mines there, which were producing in the 20s, but Placer came along in the 60s, and they spent, they drilled over 400 holes there. They drilled, um, they A lot cheaper to drill back then, probably. <laughs> what was copper well, back then? Back then, it averaged uh, 50 cents per, you know, basically through the 60s, it averaged 50. It started around 25, got up to like 75, 80. That's when inflation first started kicking in in the late 60s. So, it's, so, so copper is probably cheaper today in, in inflationary terms. Right. No, I just, I just did some calcs on that. And copper at 60 cents in 1965 would be $4.50 today and yet we're at 260. So the, like the, the price of commodities yeah. continues to fall and yet demand for commodities continues to grow. Kind of something's something's askew there. Yeah, something yeah, yeah. and and, and the, the 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 oxide of this deposit mm -hmm. has never been drilled. Well, it's it was been drilled, drilled but, but not, they threw it out because it, in the 60s they didn't know how to basically process oxides. But, and do oxides but, generally run a little lower in terms of grade than sulfides? Uh, I wouldn't say that. Ours actually runs a little higher. Um, the interesting thing about oxides is they're cheaper to process. You don't have to, you know, go through the, the, the full flotation method. You know, basically, you just heat bleach it. Yeah, so, so that, that would be a, a, a something to, to consider doing at some well, point. Well, if we, if we had half a million dollars, we could go in there and basically prove up the oxide resource. And we've calculated we could probably build a mill and a pad for about 10 million. So we could be in business for 10 million dollars. But you just we need half a million to drill it, and you can't do you know you just can't find that money these days. Yeah, yeah. You and know. there's mines producing all the time in California. Oh yeah. No, there's there's at least eight producing copper mine or not copper mines, gold mines in California right now. Yeah. Um, but we need we need higher prices. Sure. Like until copper prices are back through three dollars nobody cares about copper and they're not going to be building any new copper mines until copper's over three bucks i heard the president of Codelco say three of their properties three of their main mines need 270 280. that's right and here we are what 260. yep plus they're, they're spending billions just to maintain their current production level like a lot of the mines here's the thing that a lot of people aren't really familiar with a lot of the mines in chile have been in production for over 100 years. So they're, they're, and they're antiquated. And they're getting depleted, the grade keeps falling off, and they're spending billions and billions just to keep these things in production. They're going underground in a number of places. That's what happened at Freeport uh, in Indonesia. It used to be a big open mine, they're now going underground. They've had to spend over a billion. Uh, their production levels are, are basically off 200,000 uh, tons. So, you know, this is happening worldwide. 
we don't have high enough prices to encourage enough development. Yeah, I'm going to put a chart up here of uh, per capita demand continues to grow on top of population. Oh, that's the interesting thing. That's yeah. the thing most people don't appreciate about copper. It's um, the, the reason per capita demand continues to rise is because as countries go from rural to urban, there's more demand for electricity. And electricity can only be basically delivered and used with copper. Energy is transferred and, by... Uh, and so as more people go the urban route, as they build cities, there's more demand for copper. So they've actually done studies where how much ca uh, copper per capita exists in a certain country. And when it's not developed, like it's low, it's like five kilograms. And when it is developed, it's, it's over 100. So as the whole uh, globe becomes urbanized, becomes developed, uh, demand for copper continues to grow. Plus right. you have population growing. So demand for copper is yeah. it's, it's and never going to fall. And, and let, you know, take a look at India. They, they're just starting to do what China did uh, 30 years in ago. In Africa. Yep. Yep. I mean, no, there's a lot of places in Africa. No, the, future, the future for copper demand is just it's nothing but, uh, but up. Yeah. Um, and there is not enough copper being produced today to meet that demand. And there's not going to be any new mines built until copper prices are over three bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I've looked at the the, the crown situation uh, carefully, and, uh, and I've been a longtime shareholder, or a year and a half shareholder. And you know, um, it's it's almost like when there's nothing, you, you just because you have the deposit, you don't, almost need a some drill results or something. Yeah, like we, we suffer from not having a lot of news because the deposit's already it's been already found. Here. It's mind-boggling. Yeah. We do not It's 43101. Yeah, we've got a PEA. We don't have to drill another hole. Now, we can, and we can incur, uh, increase the economics and, on the and, project, and, and but we people, don't have to. Yeah, a lot of people you know. think there's a, this, another two to three times more copper there than the building. Oh, easy, easy. No, our PEA is done on just the one deposit. We've got four. And, and there's yeah. unlimited number of areas there are still to be um, explored. Um, but the interesting thing is, you know, until we get better prices, until right. the market starts to come back right. and wants to invest in these things, and I don't think it's going to happen until copper prices get back above three bucks. Right. It, it looked like that was. It looked like it was going. Well, we were there, and yeah. then the, tra the trade war started. You know, and, and, and I guess right now the market's thinking we want to see that resolved because they're worried about the economies growing, rolling over. Right. I don't think demand for copper rolls over because you've got this huge push. For electrification. For, yeah, for urbanization yeah. and you more see, electricity. You see Amazon the, uh, ordered 100,000 electric trucks. Right. 100,000. Right. Like the, the, I think that's half the fleet of FedEx. Or something like that, like right, right. mind-boggling. Yep, it yeah. sure is. So, forty-five million shares. Yep. Charlie William Mother, CWM. Yep. Uh, Market cap two million dollars. It's a cheap. It's a cheap option on 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 precious me precious metals and we're, copper. We're priced like a shell. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. If you're enjoying the show, subscribe to Midas Letter on YouTube so you stay up to date on everything investment. And the copper story is a sad yeah. story. You, you know what? And I said this. To, I've said this. It's almost like the world is saying we're going into a dark period because no one wants to believe that. Like, there's less optimism out there the longer you go out, and you need a long term to build a mine. Yeah. And so the, somebody's saying, you know. Like, I, I don't know what's going to happen because no one's building mines. The copper keeps getting used up is because everything needs copper. Yeah. How is this going to resolve itself? Um, I well, ask you. Well, here's the answer, Ed. First of all, one third of the population is going to die in a huge pestilence. An infection is going to sweep the yeah, earth. Yeah, but if you got copper, it kills the bacteria. What if it's viral in nature? It didn't, doesn't work. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, how does it resolve itself? Well, the big problem is, is that if there's such a shortage of copper, then why is the price so consistently low? And there is no satisfactory answer for that. The supply, the demand for copper keeps being satisfied from existing sources. So 
this is the problem, is that we're at a state of copper equilibrium in the supply and demand side presently on a global basis. Is that, because that is the only way the price can remain constant in the face of declining Unless, unless somebody, some major group in the world, some country, is trying to keep the price down. Right. Like China. China, why, why would China want the price to be down? Well, because they buy a lot of copper. Hmm. But don't they sell it? No, they buy it. And then they turn then around they and they turn around it. and sell it. Yeah. I want to sell it now, please. Yeah. I know. They, put it, they put it in devices. Ask easy questions. <laughs> Jesus. Ask easy questions. How old are you? Oh, God. 68. <laughs> you know what comes after 68, 69? Then what? 69. 70. I would dwell there. I would rest on that for a while. Stop there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know what, uh, what's going to happen. It, and nobody does. I do. I can't tell you, though. Really? You'd have to subscribe to the newsletter to find yeah. out. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Lots of activity in that newsletter. Yeah. Ton of activity. Um, the Wall Street Journal today had some interesting things to say. Uh, I didn't realize that the Wall Street Journal had become such an advocate for Trump. Did you notice that? No. Yeah. The tone of it is completely supportive of, is, of Trump. Is it a right-wing uh, rag? A right wing rag. Well, I would call it. It's definitely. It has definitely moved farther right since uh, since our Australian friend took it over. Well, I think he, I, the, the Donald Trump uh, owns a big chunk of it, doesn't he? No. Yeah, but uh, not not. Donald Trump doesn't own anything. He rents it all out. <laughs> he rents it. Yeah. Like he like he rinses his. Uh, like his wives. Do you think he he his hair color is that's his natural color? Well, it's in the, it's the natural color that comes out of the bottle of natural hair color. Sure. But is it his natural color? No, he doesn't even have hair naturally. You can just tell by looking at the guy. That you don't think that's real hair? No. What do you think it is? Shaved it off his ass and tied it up into his head. He had it implanted on his head. Do you remember that picture of him going up the stairs on Air Force One? The wind came up behind him and the hair stood up. And it was like he had parts going unnaturally up the back of the, the middle of the back of his head. And it was like, oh, okay. Now we understand why yeah, yeah, the hair I'm going to keep mine short. Yeah, well, the, you're, uh, you know, this is the great thing. I mean, you look at you and you say, this guy's not trying to hide anything. He's not trying to pretend anything that, to be anything that is not. You look at that other guy and that's all he's trying to do is to pretend to be something that he's not and to convince right, everybody right. that he's not what he appears to be, which is not really working out for him for anybody who has eyeballs that can see. At least that's my opinion. Mind you, I'm sure there's lots of Trump lovers out there who are right now hating me. And I'd like to know how much cash per share Kronos has. That's Do you want me to call him up and ask? No. Well, no, so but that's a rhetorical I, I'd like to no, know. No, I'd like to know because the stock keeps dropping. And don't they have like tons and tons of cash? 2.8 billion. Yeah. That, so at some point, that could be a takeover. Trading at cash? I don't know. I don't know what the, what the cash balance is. I mean, it would be interesting to look at that transaction and see how the ownership and control of the company exists now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I got to think that uh, I don't know. I think they're crazy. You know, it's like these guys are doing nothing to help themselves. They're just sitting there, standing there, waiting, watching the value deteriorate. If I was a shareholder, I'd be pissed right now. I'd be so pissed. I'd be well, like, "You guys have this big bankroll. Promote the stock. How about that?" Like, I mean, I know, but you know what? You, you know, if, if you could, you know, uh, promote the stock. If you make the price go higher by spending a little on financial marketing, that is not a bad thing. I for I, a shareholder, I know. for a founder, for a institutional investor that is not a bad thing the fact that all these CEOs have it in their heads that promotion is a dirty word just demonstrates in no uncertain terms how unfit most of them are to run large companies really promotion is the name of the game yeah. for maintaining yeah, but, but valuation. I mean you know some guys just won't make a lot of money like Microsoft mm. you know what do I mean Bill Gates is the consummate pr promoter uh, yeah, but he is, he's, he's hired himself, though. He's in well, that's what I'm saying. The best companies in the world are run by consummate promoters. Tesla, Elon yeah. Musk, has got to be one of the best promoters that has ever existed on the planet. Uh, Facebook, do you know a better promoter, a better self-promoter than Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. You do? Yeah, Bill Gates. Well, okay. So you're great. So you're reaching within a universe I of know. 10 uh, to point to another one. You, I mean, you, that's the point. Do you remember way back when they said Apple had the better system and yet Microsoft was uh, 
beating them at, at their own game or? Well, Microsoft, yeah, Microsoft did a way better job of marketing because right. Gates is a way better promoter than was Steve Jobs. And then Steve Jobs ran into the, his own problem of getting alienated by his management team and thrown to the, the curb. And so essentially, Apple was rudderless for that whole period of time where they went through a revolving door of mostly ineffectual CEOs right? until Steve Jobs came back and redefined the company again. Yeah. But that was an evolutionary sort of right. process. And through that process, Steve Jobs became an excellent promoter, I think. So anyways, that's what we're missing. Bruce Linton was an excellent consummate promoter, and that's why Canopy was the biggest company in the world. Yeah, well, he caught the wave perfectly. Well, you can't promote on, in a vacuum. You need to have the principal ingredients of a bull market around you. That's what most of these major companies, the large cannabis companies, fail to do miserably. That's just my two cents. That's our show for today. I look forward to not seeing you tomorrow because I'll be on the road, but our good friend Mark Latimer will be here with Ed Molesky, and I'll be here. we'll see I'll be here. you all next week. Have a great Thursday night, everybody. I'll be here.